Hello everyone, my name is Gabrielle Lemois. I'm a junior majoring in biology at Southern University in a and College. Today, I will be presenting the research that I was able to conduct at the University of Pennsylvania with HubMap on the molecular atlas of the female reproductive system. So to begin, the female reproductive system is made up of the internal and external sex organs that function in the reproduction of new offspring. It is important because it undergoes the most dynamic changes in structure and function of any adult organ system, and it occurs monthly throughout a woman's life. It is the only organ system that exhibits the same processes repeatedly in predictable monthly intervals, including proliferation and increase in cells, angiogenesis, a formation of new blood vessels, transformation, a change into something else, remodeling, a change of structure, and apoptosis, a death of cells. So the female reproductive system consists of the ovaries, the eggs, the fallopian tubes, the uterus, the cervix, the vagina, the myometrium, the endometrium, and the uterine cavity. So our aim is to analyze specific cell populations and their role in women's health. A definite molecular map has not been established, so this will be beneficial to better understanding the stages of a woman's menstrual cycle. So to begin our process, we obtain donors and get their informed donor consent. After that, we take their samples fresh and snap freeze them on dry ice and store them at negative 80 degrees Celsius until ready for use. Once ready for use, we then proceed with tissue dissection, processing, and biobanking. We then proceed with molecular assays like single cell and multi-ohm disassociation, slide preparation, and Visium spatial transcriptome assay. We are then able to analyze this data. So a little bit about our samples. We did receive them between the years of 2020 and 2021 from the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. Our organs include the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, and the uterus. Our donors do have various races, ethnicities, and stages of the menstrual cycle, along with the fact that majority of them were on testosterone treatment, undergoing gender affirmation surgery, and otherwise healthy. So a little bit about single cell studies. Single cell studies is the idea of studying the individual molecular variation of each cell. So you're able to take a group of cells, look at the single cell, look at their DNA and RNA and extract and amplify them, and then you're able to see a map. So the molecular assays that we use include ATAG-seq, which allows us to measure the open chromatin region. We also use biomarker detection for disease and illness, single cell RNA sequencing, measuring gene expression, and spatial transcriptomics of individual cells shown through imaging. So previously, there have been some single cell studies regarding the female reproductive system. However, there are some limitations in samples and assays. So I think that they have only done it on the ovaries and the fallopian tube. So we wanted a broader view of the system as a whole. So we are able to estimate the proportion of different cell types at each location through specific markers amongst express genes and spatial deconvolution. We're able to do this with the singulator, which is used for multium, 10X chromium, which is also used for multium, the wide field fluorescent microscope, which is used to view these visium slides, and then the Illumina NovaSeq, which is used for both visium and multium. So a little bit about visium gene expression. So on the slide, there are four capture wells with about 5,000 barcoded spots, which include capture oglionucleotides, which binds the RNA in the tissue. Each capture well will capture transcripts for about one to 10 cells, and it'll provide high resolution transcriptomics data. After that, we will proceed with staining and imaging, and then barcoding and library construction, and then we will sequence and use Space Ranger data analysis. So here are the four slides that I was talking about, along with the capture area and the spot the primers which bind to the RNA and the one-stranded cDNA. So we do make sure to optimize the tissue permalization time. So permalization is when the RNA is able to leave the cell so that it can get captured. However, if you permalize it too much, it can 
ruin your cells. So it can mess with the integrity of the cell, make it harder to image and visually see the structure. So H&E staining is where we create contrast and allow for a better visual of the organ tissue. So this is the 10X protocol, which includes incubation, immersion, and methanol, isopropanol, hematoxylin, brewing buffer, eosinmix, incubation again, and then you're able to image it. So we did make some modifications to this protocol, including we changed the incubation temperature to 38 degrees Celsius, we also changed the time for the hematoxylin to five minutes and the eosimix time to two minutes. So here are some stains that I was able to do of donor nine, the left ovary. So we have 15 to 30. To my naked eye, I do not know which is the optimal time. We're still waiting on the pathologist to let us know. However, we do know that it's supposed to be about a pink purple color. So we know that these are successful H&E stain slides. So some Visium results. Um, this is the fallopian tube. So we were able to get around 1900 number of spots, which is a good number. This number will depend on how big your tissue is. Here is the same diagram, but in color. So we're better able to see the different specific markers in this organ. So you can see that the blues are all together. The reds are all together along with all of the colors. So it shows diversity in this organ, but also uniform. So a little bit about the multium ataxine gene expression. This is where we find all the accessible chromatin in the genome. So we begin with the suspended nuclei. We then encapsulate the nuclei using the next gen chip in the chromium X controller. We then transfer the samples to a new tube strip and incubate them in the thermocycler to initiate barcoding and transposition. After that, we release from encapsulation and perform several bead cleanups. We then use ATAC library construction, cDNA amplification, and then gene expression library construction. Lastly, the ATAC and the gene expression samples are sequenced individually. So here's a diagram explaining what I just said. Um, you have the different gel beads that have the barcodes and they'll connect to the single nuclei and then give you a barcode for each DNA fragment. So here are some results from the bioanalyzer. The bioanalyzer is a quality control protocol. It allows us to see if our samples are in good condition. Um, we are able to see that this sample is in good condition because the area under the peak is proportional and the range should be between 450 and 500. So we know that this sample is pretty good and healthy. Um, for the ATAC, this is a little different. So these show the number of DNA wrapped around the nucleosome. So each peak represents the different number of nucleosomes. So one, two. So with these distinct peaks, we are able to see that this tissue is healthy and we can follow along, hasn't been degraded. So some accomplishments, um, we were able to do some sample quality control, like I was just saying about the bioanalyzer. Also the qubit, this little machine right here. This is another quality control. We we're also able to do some cell dissociation and multi-ohm assay, optimize slide preparation for h &E staining. Me personally, I was able to expand my research lab knowledge regarding information and protocols, along with improving my fine motor skills while dealing with samples and test tubes. So some implications, we were able to get a better understanding of the molecular structure of the female reproductive organ tissues. We were able to confirm the diversity of cell types in each organ. And the next steps include getting more donors and developing a method for the co-detection of proteins and mRNAs. Lastly, I would just like to send a big thank you to the Kim Lab, Dr. Junyong Kim, Hugh Wen, John Rosario, Y'all have been amazing. I have really enjoyed spending this summer with you guys and learning about the female reproductive system, along with the O'Neill Lab, Dr. Kathleen O'Neill and Addie Johnson, and the National Institutes of Health, NIH. So 
thank you. Without the collaboration of all of you guys, we would not have been able to make this possible. And yes, thank you for listening to my presentation and thank you for giving me the honor of spending my summer here. Thank you.